Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com for this week's episode of Market Monday on a Tuesday as usual. This one is actually on purpose though. Usually I do Market Monday on Tuesday when I don't get around to doing it on Monday. However, this week the topic at hand was going to be the week zero lists of the new set War of the Spark and how it has impacted Standard and the list was not available until this morning. So now we have the list up of all of the competitive Standard decks that went 5-0 on MT Joe and we also have a thing called the Fandom Legends that also had some of the War of the Spark cards showcased in that tournament. So it's going to give us an overall uh, idea of what cards are actually seeing play right now. And these week zero slash week one decks, they, they set the bar for standard. So there's going to be a lot of copy pasta after this, uh, five Oh finishes goes live. Like when MTG goldfish picks it up and people are going to start looking at the cards that have impacted standard standard. It's going to cause kind of a, a chain reaction, or like I said, that kind of the, the, the copycats, the net decks, and it, it will lead to what we call a self-fulfilling prophecy in these decks until the meta really can figure out how to adjust to them. So most of these cards will have the best chance of either stabilizing or going up. And that's what we're going to be looking for in this episode is any sort of sleepers. So this is going to be the Market Monday video on War of the Spark, what cards I think are going to go up, what cards are I think are going to go down. So let's just look Start off with looking at those 5-0 uh, decks. The first one is a big red deck. This is using four Chandra Fire Artisans and two Sark on the Master List. So this is just your your typical, uh, bit, what we call big red. They typically use Planeswalkers as their finishers, and then they have aggressive creatures and burn spells to back it up. So this one's also using the four of Experimental Frenzies in the list. And then it just has your usual suspects here in the... Well, actually, no, yeah, this is your traditional Big Red uh, package here with the Runaway Steam Kit and the Legion War Boss, the Goblin Chain Whirler, and the Dire Fleet Daredevil. We saw a deck very similar to this when uh, Dominaria came out with Karn at the helm of the Big Red uh, as far as the Planeswalkers are concerned. So Chandra Fire Artisan is going to work with this one with being able to give you that card draw similar to, to Karn. And it also, whenever you activate a loyalty... Uh, from Chandra, it's going to deal that much damage to an opponent or Planeswalker. So uh, it's going to... Uh, actually, when it's removed. So you're trying to tick up to the negative 7, and then the, the Chandra can actually be a finisher. But it's your typical 4-drop Planeswalker that gives you card advantage. Perfectly acceptable in this particular deck, because that's exactly what you want it to do. And it does pair very well with Experimental Frenzy. So I think that when these two are going to be in the same... Uh, package. It's going to be very similar to how Karn was with Experimental Frenzy, uh, except this one is just a little bit better for the red decks uh, as it can dish off. It can be a, a better win con, in my opinion, than Karn can. All right, so Sarkon the Master List, same thing. Sarkon is going to uh, allow your Planeswalkers to be finishers, and it's also going to give a little bit of padding uh, to the defensiveness of Chandra and Sarkon. If you do get that dragon out, then weenies and tokens, they can't get through without taking the damage from the dragon. So uh, again, this is just your your five drop that looks like they've re replaced like the Rekindling Phoenix with the Sarkon as the finisher here. And this is a, a very, very good slot in this one, but I don't think it's solidified. I think this is something you could put any any card, even demanding dragon at this point, could be uh, the five drop slot for 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 this particular finisher for the big red. So let, let's look at the sideboard still running the rekindling phoenixes. They're actually putting a Tabalt in the sideboard, which is interesting. And Shinder's Pyro Helix. Usually this this card is good in formats with a lot of one drops. And White Weenie definitely has a lot of one drops. Uh, this didn't kill two elves, for example. Very very good card in the format. Even has risk factors and treasure maps for even more card draw. Uh, and the, the uh, matchups, I, I'm assuming that these war bosses and chain whirlers are not going to be very viable. So we're looking at like the control matchups or the mid range matchups where these just get shut down. All right, so on to the next one, we have a feather deck, the feather of the redeemed. There's a lot of hype for this deck with the Dreadhorde Arcanist and the feather of the De redeemed. And it looks like that this one has worked. So it's the reckless rage combo. So you're going to reckless rage your feather or your Dreadhorde Arcanist to be able to dish off some damage to your opponent's creatures so it's a one one mana instant speed removal spell that you get some um value off of both the dreadhorde arc arcanist as well as the feather of the redeemed this one's also running cranko not really anything to pump up the cranko besides defiant strike it looks like but i guess that's good enough like i'd like to see in this particular list i'd like to see the angel the uh aurelia from the 
uh, Guilds of Ravnica just to pump up the Cranko. I think that combo is just too too juicy. This one is running the 10th District Legionnaire, uh, as this is a very good card as well to Defiant Strike. You get a Scry out of it, you get a plus one swing counter, you get a 3 3, and it's got the Adanto Vanguard. So pretty good. Oh, there's Grow to Battle in here too. I, I missed that one to putting a plus one of those counters on each up, up to two target creatures. So this is the one that's going to get uh, some residual boost to the Krankos and the 10th District Legionnaires, especially when you have Feather out to then get it back to your hand. So on the sideboard, they have a Johnny. That's very interesting with the Krenko. So there's a lot of combos with Krenko. I think this is an underrated card at the moment. Uh, and the Legion War Boss to even go even wider, and to call the Honor Guard to shut down the mid-range decks, as well as Lava Coils and the Lyra Dawnbringer. So we've seen this typical Boros deck before, um, and it looks like Feather being a 3-4 for 3 mana is definitely, I mean, good by itself. This is basically replacing the other 3-3 three, three Angel from M19, and then it has that potential uh, huge synergy with any of these cards, indestructible uh, damage to a creature, or just the Defiant Strike being a card draw engine. So that's cool that week one Feather has seen a home. Um, I'm a little bit late getting my top 10 cards you want to brew around, which both there's Feather, the Redeemed, and Cranko in that deck list. So unfortunately, we're not going to get there before other people do. All right, let's go on to the next list. This is the from, from the Beatrum. Has a, it looks like a, yep, just a gruel list. So it's going to be very similar to the Big Red except it's going to be splashing for green. We have the creatures being the the Growth Chamber Guardian as a four of, which is interesting. This When I do mark my Rogue Roundup for my other channel, this is going to be my standard pick for rotation. I think the Growth Chamber Guardian has proved itself already in basically any color that's, any uh, creature-based deck in green uh, is running the Growth Chamber Guardian, and then the uh, Gruul decks especially have, have liked this card. So keep your eye on this. Both of these cards, the Gruul Spellbaker and the Growth Chamber Guardian. It looks like they're here to stay. Uh, this one is running Domri, Anarch of Bullis, as well as another Chandra, Fire Artisan, as well as Sark on the Master List. So again, this is just like the Big Red deck, but going into more of a mid-range with the green. Uh, Rekindling Phoenix in here, Chain Whirler, Gruel Spellbreaker, Dire Fleet Daredevil. This is just your typical, we're going to go a little bit bigger than the aggressive decks, but continue to stay aggressive enough and apply a lot of pressure through like Chandra and Domri for the control list. So we've got some Lightning Strikes and Shocks. The sideboard is going to have another Domri, going to have Cinder Vines, a status to statue for the combo with the Chain Whirler. And this actually is pretty cool with, if you can give Death Touch to... And eh, no, okay. I was looking to see if there's any sort of other... I guess you can you can give Death Touch to a creature to fight with Domri. Yeah, there is some, some pretty good combos with it. The Fire Cannonade, the Lava Coil, pretty decent. Does that actually work with Chandra? Does Chandra says whenever one or more loyalty counters are removed from Chandra? Okay, cool. Yep. So if there, you have a way to actually dis, dish off damage to your own, uh, not not fire cannonade, for example, but if you could actually uh, can do damage to your Chandra, that's a way to actually dish off the damage from Chandra to the uh, targets. Anyway, this one now looks like it is just your typical aggro red deck. Uh, looks like there's no changes to this deck, so it's still good. Just your your Wizards Lightning, your Lightning Strike Risk Factor, fast 18 land red deck, still good, didn't need any upgrades. I think this deck actually does get a lot worse though, there are plenty of cards that we get from the War of the Spark, like the the uh, two mana look at the top three cards of your library, put a permanent into your hand, gain three life card, I think those are going to be a lot harder for red decks to deal with, uh, there, are, there are plenty of cards that just have that life tacked on. Anyway, now we have a Terramander deck, and this one's very interesting because it's got the Augur of Bullis, knew this card would see play. And then has the God Eternal Kefnet. So Kefnet is just a, another engine with the blue decks, kind of these blue tempo decks. This one is, I'm surprised there's not Thief. Yep, there's Thiefs in the, in the sideboard. So there's the Thief of the Sanity in the sideboard, not in the main this time, as it will come in versus um, decks that will then re bring out removal. They just still have to bring in some removal for the Terramander because this, this card can just take over the game. And the God Eternal Kefnet as well can just take over the game. It's going to run the Tyrant Scorn which destroys creature with converted mana cost three or less or returns a creature to its owner's hand. Uh, this, I think Tyrant Scorn is going to see play in these blue-black decks with even things like the Hostage Taker and the Ravenous Chupacabra to be able to get some re recurring value out of not being able to destroy a creature of converted mana cost three or less. So keep keep in mind, I guess it does work with like Augur of Bullis, but I think we're going to see an enter the battlefield uh, Demir type strategy with Tyrant Scorn to get a lot of... And maybe they, they'll actually adopt this in the Soul Tide list to get back like Jade Light Rangers 
uh, or you know something that has already got its value after it entered the battlefield. So cast down Opt, Vraska's Contempt, Cry of the Carnarium, and it's also running a four of Enter the God Eternal. So this is quite interesting, as this is basically a four four for five and deals four damage to a creature and you gain that much life. So uh, sorcery speed, I don't know if it is better than Chupacabra at this point. I think it's more of a replacement for Chupacabra. Maybe the life is is that relevant versus the burn decks. This is one another card that I think that burn gets a lot worse because of the life gain that's just attached to it um and yeah so it actually can deal more than uh no it deals four damage start creature and you gain life equal to damage dealt this way okay so yeah i thought it it, it it wish they would have said would have dealt damage equal to the mass creatures power kind of like the other uh card did out of the rakdos but anyway this very good card it's actually proven itself in week zero so we have the callous dismissal it's a new card in this and we have over in the sideboard there's the hostage taker two of hostage taker the four of C thief of sanities and doesn't look like there's anything else that has been added to the deck now we have a this one looks like just a simic deck with tamio collector of tales so tamio is going to be your card draw engine uh, with this and yeah very good card draw both of the plus and the minus and this is just a wilderness reclamation deck so they've replaced a fairy for tamio don't know if i like that yeah i don't know if i like that addition to it but it does protect you from spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice permanents that's actually quite interesting when people bring in the discard package for the wilderness rec reclamation so this basically seems to be the same deck the nexus of fate deck that existed before it's got a one of commence the end game uh where you draw two cards in mass x where x is the number of cards in your hand so it can give you a finisher for your after you begin to take all the turns with nexus of fate so it looks like that's going to be the finisher so so Tamio can't yeah can't finish the game by herself. So it does look like that is the finisher in this deck. So yeah, or just you know milling them I guess would be the other uh, route to go. There is two blast zones that is new from this deck, as well as in the si sideboard we have uh, doesn't look like anything new except for the Nissa who shake who shakes the world and Narset's reversal. I think Narset's reversal is one of the cards that's underrated at the moment. I think this card will actually start to see play in modern and legacy as it's just super, super uh, backbreaking in those formats by countering a spell and copying the spell. So it doesn't quite counter, it returns it to its hand, but then you get to counter. So if it's any sort of beneficial spell, uh, you get the the uh, the ability of those spells. So uh, there are some ar arboreal grazers in this, in this mix too. All right, so we have a Soren deck, a four of Soren, and Soren is going to be the only win con in this deck that is, no, this is a creature-based aristocrats deck. Okay, I've, for some reason I was thinking this was going to be based on the spells. So this is your aristocrat strategy. You have the Cruel Celebrant, which is the new aristocrat that will, the new blood artist, basically. We have the Gutter Bones, the Hunted Witness, and the Minrite Reaper to give you that sort of card advantage. The Gutter Bones keeps coming back. The Hunted Witness is a two for one, and the Minrite Reaper is going to draw you cards. We have the Orzov Enforcer, which is going to give you another afterlife card. Uh, I'm surprised that they're going to choose this one over the, well, possibly, over the new zombie that's a 1-2 and, and puts in the, the a mass token immediately. That's definitely a card that could go in here. We got Plague Crafter, we have Priest of the Forgotten Gods, and the Tithe Taker. So, again, this, this list looks like it is going to survive rotation. There's not a card in here. Yeah. This is all cards that are going to survive rotation except for the Isolated Chapel. And the Revival to Revenge, even, in here that returns a creature card. We converted Mana Cost 3 uh, back to the battlefield. So there's also some other things that could go in this list. You could actually splash red for the uh, the other aristocrat whenever a creature dies it uh, dishes off a of damage and the mass token i think could e easily go in here there's a lot of cards uh that could definitely go in this aristocrats type list so pretty good one though uh sideboard though isn't complete we just had another orzov enforcer and a duress that's kind of interesting i don't know if they ever created a sideboard or if it, it, it didn't uh didn't put them all down for whatever reason all right so we have now it looks like a super friends list with the johnny adversary of tyrants getting black blade uh, Kaya Orzov Ur Usurper. We have the Liliana Dreadhorde and the Sorin. So a lot of Sorin so far. We got some good list of the, the Lilianas. Uh, and this is going to have a, a Johnny's Pride Mate, Knight of Grace, and Knight of Malice. So but all of these cards are going to be your, your two-drop roadblocks until you get your Super Friends 
ready. So this is sort of like a knight's list with the History of Benalia. And we have Oath of Kaya, which I also think is one of the better cards out of the set. This in a Super Friends list is, is backbreaking because not only is it going to do the three damage in three life, so it's a lightning helix, basically not sorcery speed lightning helix. And uh, whenever an opponent attacks a Planeswalker with one more creatures, it deals two damage to that player and you gain two life. So it's going to drain them as well. And so well, you have a lot of Planeswalkers that are going to buff up your two drops as well as your Hispanalia. This makes a pretty good roadblock for, again, these, this is the perfect deck for uh, other creature-based decks or Mono Red. So really, really liking this list. You have the Mortifies, the Vraska's Contempts, and the Moments of Craving. Uh, pretty cool deck. We have a Davriel in the sideboard. Uh, another... Dispark times two, and the Tikotli Honor Guard in the sideboard as well. Okay, so now we have the first Teferi list with the Teferi and Teferi. So Teferi Tribal with Teferi Hero of Dominaria and Teferi Time Raveler. So both these are going to help lock down the game. We got an Ugin, which I'm, I'm assuming Ugin will have... Um, actually, I'm thinking of Karn here. Not, not, not Karn's the one that gets things out of the sideboard. Ugin, which is going to be another finisher in the deck, and the Three Augur of Bullises as well as Lava Coil and the Solar Blaze. To each creature deals damage to itself, it goes to its power. So Solar Blaze is sort of a board wipe. It's going to miss a lot of creatures in the format at the moment, like Wild Growth Walkers. Uh, there's a couple four fives as well that I can think of that this isn't going to hit. But it is going to hit all the Phoenixes, which I think is what this deck really wants to wipe. And most of the, the, the uh, cards out of the mono red it's going to hit as well uh it's got commence the end game so this is showing up in a lot of lists with commence the end games uh as it's just drawing two cards and putting a creature out um, and possibly a pretty big creature so this i guess this card can feel like a torrential gear hulk if a lot of times torrential gear hulk did target the uh just your typical divination cards and then left back a five six body so commence the end game is very similar to that it's going to leave back hopefully something at least like a four four or greater uh all the way up to something easily as big as an eight eight can't be countered as well it's going to be able to block whatever they attack in and then have a a, a finisher uh on this card so commence the end game we'll have to check some of the prices of these after we get done with this and see what they're they're at this one has a dovin's veto and three rouse outbursts i'm seeing a lot of these show up and a lot of brews and list as well. So this card is definitely uh, powerful enough for the format. The sideboard has more Dovin's Vetoes, another Te Teferi Time Raveler, and then has another Commence the Endgame and Solar Blaze, as well as just the usual suspects from the good old uh, Switcher really with the Legion War Boss when they take out all their creature removal. Okay, so now we have another sort of Teferi Super Friends deck with Liliana. And so Liliana, Teferi, Teferi. We have Kaya's Wrath to wipe the board. Thought Erasure to rip out the hand. Search for Azkanta. We've all seen this. Is, this is basically the new Esper control list. Has a Massacre Worm in the sideboard. Uh, Dispark and, and Dovin's Veto are both in here. And again, the Switcheroo with the Thief of Sanity. Uh, next up, or last up, we have a... So we actually do have the Soul Tie list. So let's see what innovations they have done to the Soul Tie list. It looks like just the Liliana is the only thing I can see here. Yep, everything else is the it's basically the same. So Liliana instead of something like a Vraska, which I agree with. I do think that Liliana is a bit more powerful than, than the other slot that they've used here. They are still running one of Carnage Tyrant. And other than that, it's this pretty much the same list. We look in the sideboard and it's just another Liliana Dreadhorde General. So looking over here, we'll start to look at the, the cards that have, have saw the most impact here. Uh, Chandra, definitely a lot of the Planeswalkers with Chandra, Sarkon, Soren, Liliana, Teferi seem to have a lot of lists here. And there is a lot of even things like the Rowls, uh, the, the three damage spells like the Kaya's and the Rowls and, and whatnot. So let's look over the Fandom League here. So this one, you got to assume it's not the, the greatest showing because there wasn't a lot of decks here. Uh, this one is going to be an expansion and explosion deck with the Rao Storm Conduit as a four of and a Rao's Outburst. Uh, it also adds the uh, nothing else there until we get to the, oh, we got Agra Bullis. Uh, and then we have a three of Sahili in the sideboard for this one, two of Narset in the sideboard, and no new innovations here for the expansions to explosion. So a lot of pieces are fitting in uh, already decks in already archetypes that have existed uh, and then they just get a little bit better. Of course, we knew Agra Bullis would see play. All right, so here is another Gruul deck. This one's using Ilharg, the Raze Boar, as well as... Looks like that's the only thing that's added to this Gruul list. 
until we get over into the sideboard with Vivian and Domri coming in from the sideboard. So Vivian is a good card draw engine, uh, can give your creatures vigilance uh, so they can actually protect Vivian. It also gives your creature spells flash, which is actually very relevant in this deck. So Domri, Vivian, and Cinder Vines in the sideboard. Uh, not a lot of other innovations from for this this gruel mid-range deck so this demir deck is all over so this is the one that was really showcasing war of the spark cards we have god eternal kefnet as a three of we have davriel as a three of and lilian as a four of as well as lilian's triumph as a four of narset reversal is a two of tyrant scorn as a two of and then enter the 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 god eternals and commence the end game we have dread forward invasion as a new card and from the sideboard it looks like it is just three elder spells uh to combat the uh, other sort of esper control decks or other other uh planeswalker based decks so this one is pretty good so destroy any number of, of planeswalkers and put two loyalty counters on each planeswalk each planeswalker destroyed this way so this is going to be your i think this card's going to see a lot more sideboard uh than we've seen it right now i think this is going to go in like the the soul tie decks I think this might be the the price though is pretty high already compared to how much it actually saw play week one. All right, so here we have a Golgari mid range deck. This one using God Eternal Ronus, uh, which I do th expect this be to be showing up in more lists. I don't know how I feel in multiples though, so I think the price point is probably pretty correct with God Eternal Ronus at, th at, at seven dollars. Uh, we look at the Bond of Flourishing uh, to kind of give even more life gain versus those aggro-based stacks, and this is going to be a Bolus of Citadel. That is a pretty cool combo with the Bonds of Flourishing. Uh, Bolus of Citadel is going to gain or be, allow you to cast anything off the top of your library. I think this is exactly where Bolus of Citadel wants to go in this kind of Dora the Explorer type deck where you're going to be gaining life off the Jade Light Rangers and the Merfolk Branch Walkers as long as you have the Wild Growth Walker. Okay, so the sideboard card has Obnixus Cruelty, which I think is an under undervalued card at the moment with the Exile effect, and negative 5 to 85 for 3 mana is, is perfectly acceptable in this format to then exile the problematic cards that continue to come back. doesn't work versus gods that continue to come back, even if they are exiled. Uh, however, it does get rid of things like the Phoenixes, uh, the Rekindling Phoenix or the Arclight Phoenix. So let's go down here to the... Uh, another Bant mid-range deck. This one is going to be running Elite Guard Mage as well as the, it looks like, looks like that's the only thing from War of the Spark that got added to this Bant mid-range. I'm surprised that the uh, card that puts out 1-1 one, one counters for every multicolored did not make make it in this deck. You have a Hydroid Crisis, Deputy of, of Detention, Knight of Autumn, Elite Guard Mage, Trostani. Looks like a lot of multicolored spells here. Uh, and I don't know, I think that maybe putting it instead of Merfolk Branch Walker. Uh, since there is no Wild Growth Walker, are they in the sideboard? There are no walkers in the sideboard, so I don't know, know if, if, if that's where it wants to be. I think you'd get some more value out of it than, than say, the Merfolk Branch Walker, but maybe not. Possibly not. We have Vivian, Champion of Wilds, is the card draw engine and the ability to give your cards flash, which is actually super relevant in this uh, deck with Deputy of, of Detentions. Um, yeah, a lot of these cards even like yeah, even like the elite guard mage, Trostani, uh, definitely want to be flashed in. And then on the sideboard, we have the Lazatep Plating to protect your permanence. Uh, this is like the hero heroic intervention card. Uh, another Knight of Autumn, uh, Chalet, another Chalet, and four of Dovin Vetoes. So this is going to be countering the non-creature spells indefinitely. So it's going to protect you against all those spells, uh, all those board wipe spells. All right, so the Jeskai Control, this one is going to add to Fairy Time Raveler. Uh, has Dovin's Veto, has the, uh, which is one of Nexus of Fate, not a lot of innovation to this one, as well as in the sideboard, bringing in another Teferi's Time Raveler and two more uh, Dovin's Veto. So not a lot of stuff, just adding uh, some utility cards. Rakdos Sacrifice. So this is going to be a quick deck to get out the... Uh, no, no, it's just going to be whenever a player sacrifices. So this is around the Mayhem Devil. Pretty cool deck whenever a player sacrifices a permanent. Mayhem Devil deals one damage to any target. It's not running... It is running God, Eternal Bantu, so it's going to be trying to get a lot of creatures out and then allow you to sacrifice uh, them and then dish off a ton of damage via the Mayhem Devil. So Rekindling Phoenix here is a, a, a resource that you can sacrifice over and over again. Uh, Siege Gang Commander as well to add a bunch of tokens to sacrifice. And the Liliana Dreadhorde General, which is also going to draw you a card every time one of a creature control dies. The Angras Rampage. I think this card is pretty underrated right now as well. Target player sacrifice an artifact, creature, or planeswalker based upon uh, whichever one you need. Uh, so it's going to be very, very versatile. 
in the format. A two of Lava Coil, four of Treasure Map, two of Eldest Reborn. We've kind of seen this. I think this is kind of the deck, that, the, a very similar deck that Jody Keith uh, took down a Grand Prix with, uh, with some innovations here. All right, so we have the Simic Stompy, which is not going to add anything other than Evolutionary Sage and the Aboreal Grazer. This is kind of a neat little innovation here because of the you're going to have a ton of lands off of uh, the Explore package, and then the Evolutionary Sage is actually going to be able to pro proliferate these uh, Wild Growth Walkers, Branch Walkers, and Jade Light Rangers. Zhang Yang Yu and the Wild Crafter is also going to put plus ones with counters on creatures and even nissa is going to put plus ones with counters on lands and we have vivian as a another card drawing engine so this is just a, a one one counter kind of like a hardened scales-esque type deck nissa's triumph and final devastation final devastation could be the win con here so if you can ramp out enough uh, mana you'll be able to uh, cast the final devastation so that's where zhang yang yu wildcrafter comes in as most of these cards are going to have the plus ones encounters eventually final devastation it can give a creature uh haste and plus x plus x until in a turn so you can go hit i mean any of these cards can be a win condition at that point i'd like to see like one evasive card in the deck uh in this slot i think they could easily put one uh just like a big evasive or a carnage tyrant type card uh for the final devastation to go grab uh, anyway, Karn's Bastion is as uh, the proliferate here, and another, and this one also has more Vivians in the sideboard. Rainbow Walkers. This was a Spark Double deck, which has just a bunch of walkers. Anything from Narset to Sahili to Teferi to Johnny uh, to Jace. This just looks like it's trying all of them, even Nicol Bullis uh, with Command the 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 Dread Horde, huh? To bring back Planeswalkers from your graveyard. Uh, Root Snares to Fog, Cleansing Novas, Oath of Kayas. Didn't seem like it did very well, though. <laughs> With, this is from uh, Ali Eldrazi. And the sideboard even has more Planeswalkers here. All right, Celestia Tokens uh, added. Doesn't look like a lot here except for Huatli's Raptor as just a 2-3 body, which is pretty good because it proliferates. So anything that has counters like the Growth Chamber Guardian as well as if you put counters with the uh, Chalet, Voice of Plenty, or even if Night of Autumn has a, a counter on. Or Vinter locks it on. Actually, yeah, that's pretty good here with Watley's Raptor. There's a lot of things to uh, proliferate here with Unbreakable Formation. See, I'm actually starting to think that this sort of, the Simic Stompy strategy could actually go pair very well with a Celestia strategy here. Uh, yeah, very surprised that, that that proliferate card is not in this list. I think it actually fits very well with with the list so evolutionary sage could definitely go in a simic deck or excuse me a celestia deck we have the history of Benali, legion landing so this is just your typical with a johnny uh the great hearted which also can then add more plus one counters to a bunch of creatures yep yep this shell i think is is actually quite viable uh, instead of simic going into celestia Alrighty, so we have another Simic Midrange. We'll skip this one over. Looks very, very similar to another one we looked at. Another Simic Stompy, which again looks very similar. This one is actually going into Kiora, Behemoth Beckoner, and Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. Um, and has even the Apex Hybrid here that then puts two counters on another creature control and then proliferates and proliferates again when it dies. Uh, pretty, pretty good card to... Uh, recur. I wonder if there will be some sort of recursion strategy to bring this back, but I get a lot of these cards will have plus one, plus one counters on them and is ramping out with Paradise Druid. And I wonder why Paradise Druid over... Uh, it's probably okay over Incubation Druid. Uh, and it even has a sleep in the sideboard. So there you have it. Kind of long to run down these. So let's go ahead and look at the, the cards that are impacting Standard right now. Lillian of the Dreadhorde General is the card that's gone up the most. Getting Blackblade has gone up as well. I'd actually say that Gideon was quite lackluster in all the lists that we looked at. Again, we, you can't really rely on MTGO lists because there could have been a hundred of the Gideon Blackblade decks and they'd only showcase one. Uh, so it gives you kind of a jaded uh, mix of decks from when you look at these because there can only be one list that is unique enough to then be posted on these 5-0. So getting a black blade though, uh, after looking at these lists, saw probably the least amount of plays. Even Nickel Bullis. There weren't wasn't a lot of decks that were running Nickel Bullis. Uh, there weren't a lot of Grixis decks or like Grixis Dragons decks that people thought we'd see. God Eternal Kefnet, I think, did see a lot of play. Um, but 16 is probably the right price point. So, so far, Gideon, I would say both of these have not proven themselves yet. Gideon Blackblade at a $20 card, 
I get, this is a card that needs to see play of as a four of in a main deck to be able to hold that price tag. Post rotation, though, we are having things like History Banalia rotate out, so it could be a good investment for post rotation. However, right now, it's going to be hard to justify running it over stuff like History Banalia, and this slot is very, very clogged. It is a, a, a quite potent, powerful card, but in the format at the moment, I don't know if it's what the format wants to be doing. Um, yeah. So Liliana, though, I think this is going to be your new... Uh, most valuable card. It saw enough play throughout the uh, deck list uh, to justify a week one price increase. Chandra Fire of Artisan, this is definitely the card that I think is the sleeper. This ca card saw way too much play for only the $2.50 price tag. So I think that this card is going to be the big double up. The Finale of Promise, I don't think we saw any Finale of Promises in any of the lists. Let's see here for these red lists. If they, yeah. Not a lot of finale, finale of promises, so this the only way that I can see this is if it is seeing play in any sort of modern base deck, which it probably should, is because it allows you to cheat spells uh, that have the cannot be cast, like the suspend base cards. So I think that's where this this card is going up, is people brewing those in modern. Uh, modern does have a, a lot more stabilizing factor, like if cards do see play in modern, think of cards like the As Foretold, for example. As we're told, saw very little play in standard, but it did see decks in modern and was able to, to hold its price tag and even go up. So Finale Promise, I, I I think short term, I would it is a mythic, but there's just too much value in this deck. I think things have to give, and unproven cards at the moment are cards that have to give. So I think Finale Promise is, is at $10 a little bit too rich, unless it starts to see huge play in Legacy or Modern right out the gate. So we have to wait for those lists uh, to see if it does impact the format. God Eternal Elketra saw no lists, I believe. So a lot of people are thinking this card is very powerful. I agree it's very powerful, but I don't know. It, it needs to have the right deck around it, and I don't know if our format is is actually poised for a like a a go bigger white deck. Celestia already kind of does this with cards like Trostani uh, that you're ready to finish off the game. Don't need time to actually to build this up. Uh, so it's a double strike, basically six six for five. That then can be pumped up. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you create a 4-4 zombie warrior creature token with Vigilance. So you're going to get a lot of value off of this card if it survives a, an entire turn. Uh, we've seen plenty of cards like this, like the horse out of the indestructible horse. Whenever you gain life, you, you put out a 5-5. These cards tend to be lackluster when they actually do start being played in the format. The power level's there. The, the thing that is really holding this card back is, does it find a home or not? So there, there have been plenty of formats where I've been dumbfounded why a card did not see play. A, a card, the, the Underworld Cerberus is a card that comes to mind, where the power level is just absolutely bonkers on a card that has to be blocked by three or more creatures, six, six for five. Uh, when it dies, you get all your creatures from your graveyard back to your hand. Like that sort of card, I thought for sure, would impact standard. But unfortunately, these five and six drops, they must find a home that particularly combat some aspect of the meta otherwise they they fall flat and again this can be one of those cards that i could see going either way i could see this finding a home uh seeing a lot of play being backbreaking because it just continues to create those four four black zombie uh, warrior creature tokens and you know another card that is very very tough to deal with because it keeps going back into the library um However, I could also see this falling flat, like the, the horses, like the Underworld Cerberuses, like all the cards that I've been addicted to and never really got uh, to find a home in standard. So anyway, so I think that $8.65 is a little rich for this card, unless it starts proving itself. Sark on the Master List this is another card that I think has is poised to go up in value. This being only a $2.50 card and seeing four ofs in many decks feels to me like it's the $5 card. Feather the Redeemed, I think, will start to slightly go down. Even if it sees play in a number one deck, um, I feel like this, if we've seen other rares in the past that have seen four of, think things like Tide Taker, uh, I think this is like a 3 to $4 card. So you can see, well, why do I say that about Feather, but not about Sarkon and uh, about Chandra? Well, I think these are both Sarkon and Chandra are cards that can go in multiple decks where Feather is a card that is specifically only going to go in a Feather deck. So I think this is more versatile being Sark on the Master List being in uh, and Chandra being in multiple decks. And we had the Dreadhorde Invasion, which kind of fell flat. This card only saw play in a few decks. Um, so 
I, I think that this one is more like a $2.50 card rather than a $5 card. So let's just go over here and let's just look at the, the, the War of the Spark as a format here. And I'm going to kind of go down some of these cards and we'll call it good. We're already uh, coming across a very, very long video here. So Tezzeret is a promo, which most of these promos, they, they go down because the amount of these promos are actually a lot higher than other mythics in the format. I think the Tezzeret will eventually settle around 20 bucks. Nickel Bolas, it's a $20 card. I don't believe it's a $30 card unless we're going to see it see some shenanigans in Legacy or Modern. Definitely, it does have these infinite combos when paired with other Planeswalkers. There's already an infinite combo with Jace, Cunning Castaway, Nickel Bolas, and I believe Oath of Teferi. So it's a cute card. People are going to want it. They're going to want it in their cute decks. So it's going to hold a price tag, but I think that $30 is a card that must see a lot of play in competitive decks. And so far, this one has fallen flat. So I think this one's going to be going down. Liliana, I think this is your $40 Mythic that's going to hold the value for quite some time until the set stabilizes. So I expect this to go up to $40, but it can't hold that price. Gideon Blackblade, it just did not see enough play, in my opinion, in week zero. Uh, we're going to have to see some big tournament showings with Gideon. Will it see play? Indefinitely. Will it see play as a four of in the decks that it sees playing? I don't know. I don't know if it, it is slot can be slotted in that slot, especially with History Benalia. I like this long term. Short term, I think it's going to go down to the $12 range. Uh, God Eternal Kefnet, I think this card's probably quite right with this card $15 with how much this did see play it saw a play is a three of in a deck a two of in a deck sideboards and decks I think mono blue might actually pick it up I think there's a lot of innovation to be around god eternal kefnet I like this around the 12 to 15 dollar mark teferi time raveler there's just too much value in this set for a 15 dollar rare this is going to go down to I believe it's going to be halved around the eight dollar mark it does uh people are saying it's going to see a ton of play in modern and legacy probably so but still a rare that sees a ton of play in both those formats think of like assassin's trophy it's going to be very very tough for it to hold its value unless it's sees a ton of play and impacts the format uh, quite substantially. The whole thing that I think is going against this is there's too much value in this set and 15 is too rich for my blood. Uh, Ilhard the Raised Boar, I, again, I think this is more of a $10 card. It's going to go around the $8 to $10 mark with Ilhard the Raised Boar. Um, it d has seen play though. Um, yeah. Karn, the Great Creator, again, this is another card that's from around the $8 range, I would say, for it's going to see a ton of play in various formats, all the way from Commander to Modern. However, it's it's just, right now, there's it's just too rich to be a $10 rare in the format. Fi Finale of Promise, again, we talked about that one. Finale of Devastation, I think this is going to see a lot of play in Modern. So I do think that these finales are all going to be around the $7 to $8 range. Uh, so the first one I think is going to go down, God, uh, God Eternal Oketra. I think again, this is the this is the horse out of the the format. Ugin Ugin is not seeing enough play. It's usually a one of. I think this is a five dollar rare. Blast Zone Blast Zone I think is definitely going to go down to the three to four dollar range, being halved in value. Yes, it's going to see play. It probably will see play in modern. However, I I don't see this in huge quantities in either in modern or legacy formats. Uh, as there's not enough room for utility lands when we already have a bunch of utility lands exist. Uh, unfortunately, this also comes into play with a charge counter on it. So uh, they specifically did that so that it can't kill the converted mana cost zero. Um, yeah, so you have to find a way to get a charge counter off of it because you sacrifice your storage on then permanent with converted mana cost equal to the number of, of charge counters. So again, this these utility lands are good, but think of like Arch of Araska, think of uh, Gyre Sanitarium, uh, so think of a lot of these that do see play like EDH and all these and other formats as one ofs. They can't hold that eight dollar mark. We have the God Eternal Ronus. It didn't see enough play in my opinion to justify the seven dollars. I think this is a, more of a five dollar card. The Dread Horde Arcanist, same thing. We saw like Legion's War Boss see a ton of play uh, and go all the way down. I know it was in a uh, guild kit. However, Dread Horde Arcanist, I I don't I don't know. Maybe the five dollar six dollar range is proper uh, for the Dread Horde Arcanist. It, it has seen play in multiple decks so far. Uh, Bantu hasn't seen enough play in enough decks. I think the five to six dollar range is right. The Dread Horde Invasion, I think this is one that's going to get crushed down to the two dollar three dollars. It's just too narrow. Uh, right now in the format. Uh, even the, Arist the Aristocrats deck only ran, what, two? Maybe it ran more. We'll have to recheck it. Bulls of Citadel, this card will go down because it is the the uh, draft promo. This card's going to get crushed. Sell them if you have them. Um, even if it does see play, this is uh, each local game store got packets, packets plural, 
of these for the draft weekend. So we're supposed to give out one of these for every participant. So there's a lot of these that are going to be going around with the alternate art. It can't hold its value. Karn's Bastion also is a promo, but I think that this is a card that I like long term. This will probably be the most played card in Commander out of the set when the dust settles. Uh, however, this is a promo for, I believe, launch weekend? Uh, it is a promo. I don't know what, what it's for. Uh, so short term, it's going to go down, but this is one of those cards you're going to want to be picking up like crazy. This is going to be your Reliquary Tower in uh, Commander. This is going to go in almost every deck in Commander because it's just so easy to chuck in a deck and justify it. How many decks want to proliferate things? Almost everything Commander. So short term going down, long term going up. Feather, I think, is a little bit too rich. At the three. I, this is more of a 3 to $4 card. Same thing with Ral. I see Ral at the 3 to 4 and this one's going to go down too narrow. Uh, none of uh, decks that it saw play in. I think this is more of the 2 to $3, even though it's a Mythic. Uh, it will still hold value. It won't go down to bulk Mythic. Um, and then we have Nissa. This actually saw a decent amount of play as a rare. Probably 3 to $4 marks right. Unfortunately, Vivian's Arcbo did not really do much. I think that the, the spending X into it is the biggest problem. However, people are thinking that this will see modern in toolbox decks. We'll have to wait and, and, and definitely keep an eye on the Vivian's Arcbo. Jace didn't see enough play to justify its price tag. I think it's more... I mean, around this mark, though, these could go either way. Elder Spell, I think, is a little bit too high for uh, being a sideboard card. Uh, Fanatic Glory, very, very tough to actually make this see play. Uh, I, but for Mythic, though, probably around the 2 to $3 mark is right. Uh, so let's just see if we can find anything that I think is a sleeper. Soren. Soren looks to be like it's a sleeper. It looks like seeing plays of four of in multiple decks is being able to justify this, this card going up to the $5 range. Vivian, another one that feels like a $5 rare. It saw a ton of play. Um... Let's go on to, wow, Ashex all the way up to a $3 uncommon, huh? That one just spiked up in value. Um, we have both of the finale of Revelation. Unfortunately, the finale of Revelation is not seeing play at the moment. People are, commits the end game is just a better draw spell, and we have other better draw spells at the moment for finale of, of Revelation. How are these cards tend to do see play sometime in their life in, in standard? So keep your eye on this. This could be a card that bottoms out and then pick these cards up because it definitely also will see play in EDH. So I think this one will be a sleeper. I, I allow this card to go down a little bit more, but then you should be picking up these copies. Finale of Eternity, I think are actually, pre this card's actually pretty good. So disrupt a three target creature with toughness X or less. If you put three into it, you can destroy three three drops. And I actually I actually like this card I, a lot. I think it's a sleeper because I think people are going to start running more of these in their decks because it's it's it does exactly what you want it to do with the mana you spend it. It's so uh, versatile too. Like against mono red, it can kill two two drops for four mana, which is basically what you want to be doing at that point. I don't know. I think this is going to see see more play. Um, and it is one of those mythics that's it's, it's very far down. Nimbus, that's just too cute. I think this price point's right on par for it, around the $3 range. Uh, again, though, it is going to probably be a commander. Um, so the foils are what you want to be looking at if the foils go down uh, to a, a reasonable value. Narset's Reversal. I think this is also one of the sleep, sleepers. I think this is one of the most powerful cards in the set. I like this for Legacy. I like this for Modern. I think it's going to go up to more of the $5 range and stay there. Um, it's going to see play indefinitely throughout its standard. And yeah, it's one that I like going up. Here is the big sleeper, Chandra Fire Artisan. This is the card that I think is going to indefinitely go up. It saw way too much play week one or week zero uh, to justify the $2 price tag. Uh, Sahili Sublime Art uh, will probably go down because this is uncommon. Uh, Sublime Artificer. Dreadhorde Butcher just didn't see enough play for all the hype for the Dreadhorde Butcher. I think this will be your $1 to $2 card. This might be the right price point for it. Sark on the Master List going up in value uh, because it saw a lot of play. Uh, Johnny saw a reasonable amount of play to keep. It's $2.50. Uh, entered the God Eternals, I think, is, is going to go slightly up. Uh, Domery, I think, is probably about right for the 2 to $3 for how much it saw play. And the other sleeper in the format commits the endgame. I think this is, uh, again, more the 3 to $4 range seeing play as a 2 of copy in most blue blue decks. I think that's where it's going to go. And Kranko, I think, is going to slightly go up too because of, of how cute this card is and how many people are going to want to be building around it. Some of these cards that didn't see any play, the Time Wipe... Um, the Bioessence Hydra, the Masker Girl, the Mobilized District. These could be sleepers. They're, the power level is definitely there. The, the power level of this set is crazy. 
Um, oh, here's a couple other sleepers. Oath of Kaya. This definitely seems to be more than a dollar. I think most of the decks are going to want to play this card just because of the gain life. So this is just shuts down aggro. I think the Esper decks are going to start to pick it up. Uh, if not, at least in the sideboard, you know, it kills Chain Whirler at this point and gains you three life. And then it can actually, if you stick a Planeswalker, it's going to give red decks uh, trouble too, because if they attack into you or a Planeswalker, you're gaining that life to stabilize. So I like Oath of Kaya. It's actually going to be one of the cards I believe is going to go up. Uh, Nahab the Dreadlord, I like as a sleeper for, there's, someone's going to break this in modern at some point, but again, I'd allow it to even go down even further in value and then start to pick up some of these cards for the long term. So it is kind of awkward though, because you got to think of the set very much similar to Khans of Tarkir and Dominaria. There are a, there's just too much value in this set right now. And there's the power level is just too high that it affects all the cards across the board. Meaning this, this is, this box is going to be opened and opened and opened and open. This set is going to hold its value for quite some time. It's not going to give for quite some time because the power levels is, is just massive. And then it's going to get a reprint and it's going to continue to be opened and it's going to continue to be open and it's going to continue continue to be open and then when after three to four months down there's gonna be too much supply comparatively to other cards in uh ravnica legions even guilds of ravnica dare dare i say and those are the i i would rather i think core 2020 is the set that is going to be the best to invest in because i don't think it's going to be open very highly uh because this deck is just going to or this set seems to be a knock out of the park so anyway as far as other sleepers here i i think that we we've, we've covered most of the cards uh, most of these uncommons are still a little bit over, um, overvalued, even though a bunch of these commons have seen play. There could be sleepers like Widespread Brutality. If you actually played this in the pre-release, you got to see how powerful this card is. If you have any other ways to amass tokens or amass uh, an army, this can actually be a huge board wipe as well as pumping up your token. Um... So there could be some sleepers here that we'll have to look at right now. But as far as week one, I didn't, I don't see anything else that is necessarily a sleeper that saw more play than, than where it saw with its price price point. So if you're actually looking for a top 10 list and more TLDR version, come over to the Rogue Roundup. I'm going to be giving my 10 picks of cards that are most likely to go up or most likely to go down from this set uh, based upon the week zero um showcase so a bit of a longer uh market monday hope you enjoyed this nonetheless has been kevin with the rogue deck builder thanks for watching